Yeah, Jeff, um, just how, how important is it to uh, just to maintain the structure uh, that you've shown these last six games, uh, just knowing that, uh, you know, eventually uh, the offense will come, uh, especially uh, after you break through on the power play? Well, I think it's critical that we maintain the structure. I think it's critical that we stay with it, um, continue to be a hard team to play against, continue to uh, be good defensively. Um, I think that's how you win in this league. The teams that check ultimately are the teams that win. Um, so that's what we want to do here is we want to win long term. And, and so you got to learn to check right. Um, you know, and in, in the meantime, you can't, you can't press for offense. You can't uh, get frustrated and cheat for offense. If you do those two things, uh, you won't score more and you will give up way more. And, and so that's not a recipe for success. I think our guys understand the recipe for success. We just got to stay with it. And sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do uh, in life to stay with something when you don't see the results, but that's what we have to do. It's just a matter of, uh, I imagine it requires a lot of discipline just to, to not want to, like you said, when, when things aren't going well offensively to, to kind of cheat. Yeah, no doubt. I think guys have to understand that the way that they're helping the team is, is a, a lot of times way well beyond producing points. And, and, you know, we reward points in, in pretty much everything we do in, in, in a lot of ways uh, in, in hockey and, and probably don't always reward winning enough. Um, and ultimately for guys to help us, win more, which is what we're all trying to do. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't fall just on points. Certainly we've got to produce a little bit more, but we don't need to produce a whole bunch more. If you really look at it, you know, we need to flip a goal a game and that's not, that doesn't mean you got to produce way more, just a little bit more production and a little bit better defensively. And uh, in Mistakov, is he injured or do you have an update on his availability for tomorrow? Uh, questionable for tomorrow. Okay, and, and I saw that, uh, well, Helm, uh, is he, he was back at practice. Is he available for tomorrow? Um, it's, you know, same. I, I don't know that, that answer. I'll know more tomorrow. And uh, one, one last thing. Uh, I saw Svechnikov um, taking some reps there on, on, on the power play. Um, what, just what are your, your plans? Do you have any plans with him as far as wanting to get him a look, or do you just kind of take it day by day? Uh, day by day. Tomorrow he would be the 13th forward if everybody's uh, healthy and ready to go. Um, um, so you know, I guess it, I guess it, it'll be day by day, and we'll see we'll see where it goes. Thanks. Next question from Valine St. James. Hi, Jeff. What have you thought of? I mean, obviously he's another guy where you'd like to see more points, but just the way Philip Sedina is playing. Um, you know, I, I think Phillip's done a good job. Um, I think he, uh, he's progressed. Certainly he's progressed from a, a year ago. I think he's a better hockey player today. I think he uh, is gaining more confidence even in practice today. You could see him making plays. Um, and I think he's gaining confidence. Um, you know, I think like anybody, especially when you're young, you know, you value, you, you value as we just talked about, probably production. And as you get older, you kind of start to realize it's all about winning. And, and not that he doesn't want to win, he totally does. But it, it, when you're young, you, a lot of times you end up pressing for offense or, or cheating for offense. And, and I think he's done a pretty good job of not doing that. I think he's done a pretty good job of understanding that he's got to be a complete player, um, that the goal is to try to win the hockey game. And you're not going to score every shift and you're not going to score every game. And, and yet you can have, still have a positive impact on the game. And I think he's doing a pretty good job with that. And just that one time on the power play, we saw a lot of yesterday. I mean, is that is that an aspect of his game? You think that ultimately can, he can turn into a real positive? I do. I do. You know, we ran one off the crossbar. Um, I think. I think the other part of that is being multidimensional. Um, you know, the guys that are really good over there. If you you know, these are the best in the world. But if you look at the Kucherovs and guys like that. They get the puck sometimes at one time, and sometimes they seem pass it on a fake slap shot. Sometimes they shoot it for a shot tip. And I think adding all that into his arsenal and not just relying on just the one timer is important, but it's a it's a learned process, you know. Um, so you, you want to have that weapon, but you want to be able to do more with it. I do think he's done a pretty good job on that half wall of not just being a stationary, just a one timer guy. And I think he's done a fairly good job of going downhill when he gets the puck uh, in a one-timer spot, is just making those reads of what's the best play available. A lot of times if you ring one off the crossbar, they're gonna come flying out at you and that's when you gotta make a different play. And I think that's just a process that he's continued to, to learn and get better at. 
Anything further on Tyler? Um, I did not skate today, so, you know, um, I don't know any other way to list it as then, or to say it as, as except day to day. I really don't, you know, I think in, in, at any point uh, he could get himself where he's, where he's skating. And once he's skating, it's just a matter of getting in shape. So I don't know what to say beyond that. But fair to say he's out for the weekend. I mean. What's today? Thursday? So um, Friday, Saturday? Feels like he's out for Friday, Saturday. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Next question from Max Bolin with The Athletic. Hey, Jeff, when you talk about, you know, flipping that one extra goal per, per game, I know it doesn't have to be the top guys, but is there anything you're seeing from Dylan or Anthony that could help get that goal, whether it's shooting more or doing something different? I would actually go the other way and say making sure that we don't give that extra goal up a game. Um, uh, you know, I think both those guys want to score and they both need to score and they both need to be offensive. But, um, you know, I've, I've talked to both of them about making sure that their defensive games are that much better. And, um, you know, they're, they're all they're both getting some chances. Um, so, you know, ultimately, I think those chances will go in, but we got to make sure we avoid big mistakes where we give up easy goals. And, um, you know, those two obviously garner lots of ice time. And so a lot of, a lot of that, uh, they, they bear a lot of that, that, that weight on their shoulders. So um, ultimately, it, it's all about finding ways to, to, to win the hockey game and flipping that. And certainly, you know, the easy way is if, if the puck goes in all the time, but it doesn't always happen that way. And so you got to win the hard way lots of times. And so we just got to keep focusing on trying to find ways to win that the hard way. And then uh, way off subject here, but do, have you gotten to know Phil Oser at all in his couple years since he came over in, in the goalie development pipeline, I guess? Um, now, Max, if you had really done your homework, you'd know that, that Phil Oser came in uh, as a freshman right when I was leaving as a senior at Ferris State University. And so um, I think I showed him around a little bit when he first was coming in on his visit, and then I stayed there for for uh, for four years as a as a as his coach. I've known Phil a long time. I think he's a great guy, uh, great at what he does. Um, he he was able to become a, a pretty good college goalie and a good pro despite the the poor coaching that I gave him early as a goalie coach when I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. So um, you know, but I like Phil a lot. What what does it bring to? I guess your guys' organization to have someone who can specialize with the goalies. Like, I mean, you know, as a goalie, not all the development people know goaltending that well. Well, I think it, it, it adds a, a, in a lot of areas, you know, one is certainly in, in, in drafting goalies. And, and so he would be, um, you know, one of the main guys to go out and, and, and scout those goalies and goalies are a different animal to scout. You know, I've, I've run into lots of coaches uh, over or scouts over the years, whether it be in pro or in college who didn't feel super comfortable scouting goalies, you know, didn't, they, they look at it as a different, I don't think it needs to be that, but that's the way a lot of guys feel. And so uh, this, this gives the organization a guy who uh, in evaluating goalies, whether it be for the scout, free agency, uh, any of those situations to bring goalies in, um, you know, he's done it for a long time. He's got a lot of experience doing it, uh, uh, evaluating guys. And, and, and so I think it, it is important, real important to the organization. And then just from a development standpoint, you know, it, I think it's important to have a goalie guy in, in that situation. And, and he's got a real good uh, people skills. Uh, he does a really good job of communicating. Um, so, you know, he communicates with Jeff Saleko, our goalie coach all the time. He communicates with myself. He's communicated with the GR staff lots. Um, and he's, he's, he's very professional, well laid out. So I, I think he's been an excellent addition to the organization um, without a shadow of a doubt. Thanks, Jeff. I'll do my just homework just better another, next time. Just another bulldog making an making a impact in the pro hockey world. Yeah, there you go. All right, thank you. Yep. We'll wrap up with Ted Colson from the Detroit News. Would you say it was like overcoming the bad coaching or the bad? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was right out of playing, and and he was my first protege, and I had no idea how to help him get better. And and that, that's actually a true story. And and he was, uh, he had went to in the summer to go work with a guy by the name of Brian Decord, who, who works for Toronto now. And and he came back, and he was way better at everything I wanted to be better at, and I didn't know how to do it. So I ended up going out and spending a week or so with Brian Decord and learn how to coach goalies. So it was honestly one of the best things that happened to me. But yeah, that's there you go. There you go. Hey, what is going back to Svech for a second? What does he need to show you guys to stick this time? Or, I mean, what hasn't he done in the past? Or, and what does he need to do? Uh, you know, ultimately, first off, he's got to get an opportunity. And right now, he's on the outside looking in. So, 
Um, you know, he's here as, as depth right now. Um, so, you know, I think it first starts with that. If he doesn't get opportunity, then anything I say beyond that really doesn't matter because you don't get a chance to show it at the NHL level. Um, when he has that opportunities, he's played okay. What you need to do to stick is you got to play great and you got to make a huge impact on, in, in the game. And usually you're going to do that with about eight to, to 12 minutes. That's what you normally get when you get called up. And in those eight to 12 minutes, you got to be really good. Then the next night, maybe you go from eight to 10 and then 10 to 12 and 12 to 14 and so on. Um, some guys end up working backwards. You know, they get, they get a real good opportunity. They go from 12 to 10 to eight and then they're, they're, they're not here anymore. Um, all we want is guys that are going to help us win and guys that are going to make big impacts on the game to help us win. So that's what he, he needs to do specifically, you know, what it can fetch, bring to the table. Um, you know, I think uh, he's a guy who has really good one-on-one -on -one offensive ability, um, is a great, great kid, works extremely hard. Um, it has to just kind of put it together in the team game. And, and so we'll see. We'll see if he gets the opportunity, number one. And then if he does, if he can uh, run with it. It's, it was such a small sample size, but what did you hear when he was down in GR? I mean, those several games or whatnot, did he look good? Yeah, too small a sample size. Okay. I think, I think they, you know, I think he'd played fine. Um, you know, I think they're all getting adjusted to the new kind of world we live in and, and the, you know, different parameters, driving day a game and stuff like that. So I think he played fine, but it was too small a sample size to really put a whole bunch into. I mean, the other thing he's got to do is stay healthy. You know, that's been a hard thing for him. Do you think he's the whole of the knee stuff, all that's kind of been taken care of? I mean, you think he's not thinking about that as much? I don't know that answer. You know, that would be a, a question for him. Um, I, I just know that he's been out lots and it's, it, it takes its toll on you and, and, and can hurt your development. And, and um, you know, it doesn't mean that, that it, 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 it's going to crush him. It just means it makes it harder. So he's got to climb, he's got to climb over those obstacles. Uh, and he's had lots of them. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. That's it for us today. Thanks, everyone.